is all about looking at um, Newton's second law. for rotation. So what we have in this is that the sum of our torques is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration of the object. So there's already a video on moment of inertia, but as far as angular acceleration goes, we're going to have only at a non-slip condition We have some relationships. One, that x can be expressed in terms of the radius of an object times <clears throat> the angle through which it turns, uh, or velocity can be expressed as the radius of an object times its angular velocity. This would be like for a wheel rolling without slipping or a ball rolling without slipping. And then acceleration is equal to um, the radius times the angular acceleration. So what this expresses to me is how quickly um, my angular velocity changes. It expresses the angle that an object turns through. Okay, it's just a quick look at what that alpha thing is all about. Now, in Newton's second law for rotation, it's important to note that pulleys now have mass, so we can't ignore that. And that's, that's a big place where it happens. Now, what this does for us, and we'll look at a very simple situation. So let's say we have a pulley. Um, and the moment of inertia of that pulley can be anything we want it to. Let's just say it's constructed so that it is 3 halves mr squared. Okay, And attached to that... We have mass 1, that is 2m, and then mass 2, that is 3m. Now, <clears throat> in this case, because the pulley has mass, the tension in this part of the string and the tension in this part of the string are not equal. Which means what we traditionally do when we look at free body diagrams for these objects doesn't work anymore. Uh, namely that when we say we just have the force of tension acting on this, so uh, 2m times a equals tension <clears throat> what's tension 1, and then over here looking at this object we have tension 2 pulling up, gravity pulling down, so 3m times a equals um, the weight 3mg minus tension 2 because these things aren't equal, I cannot add these equations anymore to get to the solution. So what I have here are two equations with two unknowns. Well, two equations with three unknowns. We can't figure that out. We have no way to relate T1 and T2, so it's almost impo it is impossible to do the problem with just this stuff. So what Newton's law for rotation offers us is a way to get that third equation. The sum of my torques is equal to I alpha is equal to the torques acting on this thing. So when we look at this ring in particular, it has tension 1 and tension 2. Each of these are forces located at a distance r tension 2, at a distance of r away. So my torques become T2 times r minus T1 times r. And, and this is how we're going to relate everything. Now, in this case, we're at non-slip, so we are allowed to use um, A equals R alpha. So, 3 halves M R squared times A over R, that's what my alpha term is. So now these are all in terms of acceleration is equal to T2 R minus T1 R. Well, I know what T1 is, and a little quick work shows me that T2 is equal to 3 mg minus 3 ma. 3 halves mr squared times a over that same radius is equal to t2 3 mg minus 3 ma times r 
minus T1 2MA times R. Oh, well, I look at this, one of my R's goes away here, and these R's all go away. So, <clears throat> 3 halves MA, we bring this over, plus 3MA plus 2MA equals 3MG. <clears throat> so the, the, the place where it's different than this is that I now have the inertia of the pulley in my expression for the acceleration of this object. So I'd have to add them all together. So I have 1.5 plus 3, 4.5 plus 2, 6.5. So my acceleration is equal to um, 3g over 6.5. So whatever that comes out to be, it's not it's not terribly important now without the equation. But <clears throat> what we see is that the inertia of the pulley now matters in the acceleration of this system. Um, a less complicated system you may see on the AP test in some form or another is just a mass m attached to a spool and we'll say it's really easy the moment of inertia here is one half the same m times the radius of the spool squared <clears throat> in this case the acceleration cannot be free fall it cannot be g because of the action of this spool so looking at just this, it's going to have tension up and weight down. So the acceleration has to be something less than gravity. I know that MA now is equal to MG minus T. And for T, we get one other expression from this spool. Tension's pulling down, so the sum of my torques is equal to I alpha, and that's equal to T times the radius. So one half m r squared times alpha, which is a over r, is equal to t r. So my r's again all cross out, and I have one half m a is equal to t. Now I can add these things together, the t's go away, and so I have three halves m a is equal to mg. My mass is now cross out and my acceleration is two-thirds of gravity. It's less than what it was before because <clears throat> we're adding in the inertia of the pulley. We're also having to exert force in making that object spin. These are the easiest case scenarios and so the thing I would I would really stress knowing about how to use Newton's second law for rotation in, in these coupled motion problems um, is the basic sum of my torques equals I alpha equals torques. <clears throat> and the thing to remember about a torque, okay, is that it is the um, perpendicular component of force and radius. So while we're looking at torques, we see that the radius points this way here. Well, we'll do it here. For, for this one in particular, my radius is in this direction. The torque is down. For a pulley, the torque has no choice except to be at a right angle. All right. Um, other times, it, it may not be quite so simple, and we'll have to do some trigonometry to figure it out, but usually then it's just going to be TR times sine theta. Uh, that's something that will come up as we look at like a physical pendulum or a simple pendulum. But again, we have review sessions on that. The other place we see this is a um, slipping, where we are rolling with slipping. Slipping, slipping, till we get to an eventual point where we are no longer slipping. So, uh, 
an example would be we have a ball and we'll say if that ball gets hit by a stick and it moves with an initial speed of v0 the coefficient of friction mu okay so and the, and the ultimate problem here is to find time when the object is rolling without slipping so <clears throat> initially at the beginning when time is equal to zero in, in the velocity world we have v0 okay and then our force on the object in order to get all of this we have this mass so we have mg this way its velocity is in the forward direction so we have friction pulling us back so the sum of my forces on this object are equal to the mass times the acceleration and it's equal to friction which is slowing me down all right so the mass times the acceleration would be mu mg the acceleration is mu g and the velocity as a function of time is equal to v0 minus mu g because that's slowing it down also to begin with we have when time equals zero the initial angular velocity is equal to zero it starts off not slipping <clears throat> And so we have an object with a zero initial angular velocity with a force of friction acting on the object at a distance of r away from its center. So we have to use torques. Some of my torque is equal to I alpha. And that's just going to be equal to the force of friction times the radius of my object. <clears throat> so here we have I alpha is equal to mu mg r. So alpha is equal to mu mg r over i where alpha comes out to be what is it, mu mg r divided by well it's a ball two-fifths mr squared r goes away m goes away and so alpha comes out to be five halves mu g over r and omega as a function of time is equal to just alpha times time. Five halves mu g over r times time. Now at the beginning, I cannot say that velocity is equal to the radius times omega. That's not true because we are slipping. So we are not allowed to say that at all. But at the point we get to rolling without slipping, we are in a definite position where we can say um, that velocity is equal to r omega. And that's exactly what we do. We say our velocity, v0 minus mu g t, I should have put that there, mu g t, is equal to r times our function for omega. Big R. 5 halves mu g t over r. So those things go away. V0 minus mu g t is equal to 5 halves mu g t. We can add them together. V0 is equal to 5 halves plus 2 halves, 7 halves mu g t. And t, doing a simple algebra, is um, 2v0 over 7 mu g but this is going to tell me the time when things stop rolling it's slipping <clears throat> but what's important here and what's something that we will carry throughout this is the idea of for the same object looking at both its linear properties and its angular properties so we do Newton's second law for um, just regular linear property linear um, expressions and then Newton's second law for rotation because it's doing the two things at the same time and this is when we tie it together but we can only use this when it is not slipping
That's why it becomes that non-slip condition that we look for and that we plug in.